but they took a sample from all the bags that were filled and found that they took a sample of 26 bags from uh, what the company is filling. Uh, they sampled 26 bags. And the mean of the 26 bags is 420. So the mean came to 420, but it's supposed to be 424. And then uh, the mean, the standard deviation of uh, those 26 bags is uh, 30. Remember, you have to take a sample and use the sample to infer into the population. So that's what this uh, company did. Assume the population mean population is normally distributed. So we are given a level of significance to before we do the test. The level of significance is uh, 5%. Okay, and um, um, we are told to state the null and alternative hypothesis and actually do the test. So that's what we are going to do now. So right here, I copied out all that we are given. So we are given the status quo, what the expectation is, okay? And then to test the claim, um, they took a sample size of uh, 26, and the mean of the sample is 420, which is less than the status quo. And the sample standard deviation is a 30. Uh, we are given alpha, so we are checking off what we are given. If, I, if we know alpha, we already know alpha, it is 5%. Therefore, the confidence interval is 95%. Because alpha plus confidence interval is equal to one, area under the normal curve is one. All right, so there are five steps in hypothesis testing. For you to do this test and get back to the company, you have to go through the five steps. Step one, identify the claim. Another way of saying state the claim. So I have already stated the claim, the null hypothesis, in other words, the status quo is the mean is equal to 424. Remember, the null hypothesis has to go with equal sign. The null hypothesis always goes with equal sign. Then the alternative hypothesis, what are they suspecting? They are suspecting that their machine is not feeling correctly. It's underfilling that was the keyword the machine is underfilling because the keyword is underfilling we use less than so actually we are doing a left tail test because of the alternative hypothesis and the keyword we see that we are doing a left tail test and what kind of left tail test are we doing? We're doing a left tail T test because we don't know the population standard deviation. What we do know is sample standard deviation. We are given sample standard deviation. Sample size is less than 30. So this is a kind of date for T hypothesis testing. So T alpha. Of course, you know that since uh, it's a left tail test, and this is 5%, we are not going to divide alpha by two. So we just did step one, step two. Step two. Step two. state alpha is already given to us. Alpha is 5%. Am I dividing alpha by two? No. Why? Because it's a left tail test. 
it's a one tail left test and we found out it's a t-test one tail t-test and then we got to find the critical value step three find the critical value the critical value is a t critical value so t okay so i'm going to find inverse t inverse t area to the left is 0 0.05 and degree of freedom is n minus one which is 25. so i get my calculator and find that critical value and i'm not dividing alpha by two the critical value is going to be negative because it's on the left hand side so we already know that so i'm going to pull up my calculator and find the critical value, the T critical value. So second distribution, inverse T is number four. So the critical value is 0 0.05. I mean, the uh, area to the left is 0 0.05. Degree of freedom is 25 n minus one, and I'm going to calculate the critical value. So the critical value is negative 1.71 approximately. So negative 1.71 is the critical value. So that is negative 1.71. The critical value is the, is the boundary line between acceptance and rejection. The critical value is the boundary line between acceptance and rejection. Step three, I have calculated the critical value. So the critical value is right here. Then step four, calculate the test statistic. Calculate the test statistic. So I am going to calculate the test statistics. Another way of saying calculate the central limit theorem for T, uh, the z-score for central limit theorem. So that is um, T is equal to sample mean minus population mean all over standard error for T. Standard error for T is standard deviation of a sample size. All right, so we fill in what we have. We already have all the stuff, all the givens. So sample main is 420. Population means the status quo is 424. Sample standard deviation is 30. Square root of sample size, square root of uh, 25, 26. Okay, we don't have to calculate it because we can simplify that out and get the answer. And when we get the answer, we shall see whether the answer, the test statistic, falls into the rejection region. In other words, is this test that this is falling into the shaded region or is it in the white region? If it falls in the Y region, we accept the null. If we, if the test statistics falls into the uh, rejection region, we reject the null. Okay, so I'm going to go to my calculator again and do the test, then make a decision. So step five, step five, make a decision. I'm going to be making a decision using the test statistic. And after making the decision with test statistics, I will also make a decision with p-value. So making a decision with test statistics, so I'm going to my calculator and calculate. So I will clear this, go to start and do a hypothesis test for T. 
Am I given data? No, I'm given the statistic. And then uh, what is the mean of the population? Which mean are we, de are we debating? 424, mean of the 424. Then what is the mean of the sample we are using to do the test? 420. What is sample standard deviation? 30. What is the sample size? 26. What kind of test am I doing? Left tail because there's uh, underfilling. Underfilling. So it's a left tail test. And then I like to draw. So I'm going to draw. I can already see that the probability of accepting the null hypothesis is high because a lot of region is shaded. So what does that mean? The shaded region is the is the p-value. The shaded region is the p-value, the probability of accepting the null. Okay, so uh, let's uh, see what the test statistics. So the test statistics gives us negative 0.68. So this is equal to negative 0.68. Negative 0.68. And let's go to the p-value. Let's get p-value also. The p-value is 25% or 0.25. So p-value, looking at my diagram, the area of the shaded region, p-value is implies 25% or 0.25. So we're going to make a decision using uh, the uh, test statistic. So using the test statistic, the decision, decision step five of the hypothesis testing, negative 0.68 falls into the acceptance region negative 0.68 falls into the acceptance region. And which means that I will accept the null hypothesis. Negative 0.68 falls into the acceptance region. So I do not have enough evidence to reject the status quo. I do not have enough evidence to reject the status quo. So I'm accepting the null. Why? Using the test statistics. Accept the null hypothesis. Conclusion, I do not have enough evidence to reject the status quo. So even though they feel that it's under filling, but it's still working well. So that the um, the sample, the, the 26 samples they collected is not enough to disqualify the machine. They don't need to change the new the machine. They can work on it to make it uh, work faster, but the machine is still performing. So are you as a statistician, you now explain to those who hired you to make this decision that the machine is still working because according to the test, you do not have enough evidence to uh, reject the null. The null, the, the null means the status quo. So the status quo is still working. Make sure that in your decision, you are telling them, speaking the language they will understand. You are not uh, saying, speaking jargon, uh, statistical jargon to them. Explain the, 
explain your uh, tests, your findings in the language they will understand. So that is how to do the tests using the, uh, the test statistics. What if I'm told to do the test with p-value? So let's do the conclusion with p-value. The p-value is 25% or 0.25. Remember the condition. The condition is that if p-value is if the value is greater than alpha, you, you accept the null. If the value is greater than alpha, accept the null. So let's see. Let's see. The p value is greater than alpha. Alpha is 5%. So 25% is greater than 5%. 25% is greater than 5%. The p-value is greater than alpha. So we accept the null. Therefore, if I'm using the test statistics, I will accept the null. If I'm using p-value, I will accept the null. So using p-value, I will also accept the null. The same decision. I do not have enough evidence to reject the status quo. So you uh, tell those who invited you to come and do the test that uh, the machine is still working, even though the thing is underfilling, but it's still working. Um, according to the test you did, there is not enough evidence to, to reject the null. Uh, just pay attention, make sure you know, or you remember that this is a, a left sterile test. Since it's a left tail test, you can only use, use the test statistic and the and p value to do the test. You are not allowed to use confidence interval to do a one tail test. So you cannot conclude this test with confidence interval. The only time you use confidence interval to conclude a test, hypothesis test, is when it is. Uh, when it is a two-tail test. So we have we have enough evidence to say that this machine, even though the thing is underfilling, it is still working, uh, it's still working well. There is nothing to change yet. It's still working well. Okay. So that is a uh, Example one, doing a hypothesis test using all the five um, steps. Hypothesis testing using the five steps. Okay. That is exam review one.